do you, do you notice when you're afraid how much you eat? It's just like, <laughs> like and everything's kind of this. And it's amazing how much we use food to get away from ourselves emotionally. All right. Um, we should, if, should go on a fast. Should go on a fast. A forced fast between the entire sessions. <laughs> um, one thing I'd like to talk to you about is that some people had some emotional experiences during the break uh, that I'd just like to talk about a little. And that is that many of you have the emotion that you would like to get away from your own emotions. Yes. Right? Now that is a very, very dangerous emotion that you have. Particularly if you're mediumistic. Because if you're mediumistic and you want to get away from your own emotion, then what happens is you finish up inviting a spirit in who wants to get away from their own emotions. Oh, no. And they can overcloak you quite easily in that state. And before you know it, you're in a, st in a state where you're experiencing a spirit's emotions and it doesn't benefit the both of you at all. And so that happened uh, a couple of times in the break. So what I did was I stopped the person from doing that and got them back into being inside of their own body again, back into being with themselves. So if you could just bear that in mind when you're processing emotion, that if you have a desire to get away from your own emotion, that is when you're in the most vulnerable state when it comes to spirits. All right? So if you um, want to do some progression and you're mediumistic, you are far better off praying to God to just keep aside these spirits from you for a while and firstly, before you deal with other emotions, firstly focus on your emotion of neediness, which is the addiction, that get, and that's driven by the desire to get away from yourself. When you have a desire to get away from yourself, you go out of body, basically, and any spirit in that mode can take over your body. And to be frank with you, the mental institutions are full of people who are in that state. And that's not a state that I'm encouraging you to get into. Can you understand that? Because it's quite easy in that state to be heavily influenced by a spirit for a long time. And, uh, and my suggestion is to not allow that state. And the way you not allow it is by owning your own stuff, staying in your own body. Right up it goes. It might not be working because I've still got... Oh, no, it should be working. No, it's not. Can you put the talk... It's now working? Yep. yep, there we go. Um, what if you don't know if you're mediumistic? Um, generally, if you're not sure that you're mediumistic, but d just be very sensitive to your own emotional experience because a lot of times you'll feel like there are times when either there's people talking to you trying to get you into a certain state or you'll find that you go into a sort of a heightened awareness state that's not normal for you or you go into a very detuned state that's not normal for you. So any major change in your state is usually going to be influenced by spirits. And if they're influenced by spirits, there's a high likelihood it's driven by a desire that you have to get away from your own emotion. So try to focus on your own emotional state all the time. Stay in your body. You don't need to let anyone else <laughs> take over your body. Stay in your body. A lot, a lot of us would like to have someone else take over our body because we don't want to have responsibility for it. Get back into your own body and stay in your own body. We have a, oh, sorry. Um, we need another person. Ken's taken Hiroko's advice. So, <laughs> you can. Good on you. Um, AJ, I'm just wondering about um, when you are beyond um, knowing that you're trying to escape your own body, it's into denial, meaning you don't even know that you're denying it because you're so afraid. Yep. And I wondered if, for example, these films would normally terrify me because I am frightened of the spirits, but they don't terrify me. Mm -hmm. So I was aware that there was tensing, but um, um, is, that, is that implicating that uh, there is a, a greater fear than normal fear, if there's <laughs> such a thing? The goal of this isn't to terrify you. The goal of this is to help you go through an emotional exp fear experience and come out the other end of it. All right? So firstly, we need to look at what the goal of this is. It's not to actually terrify you into a state where you're now living in your fear constantly. 
It's actually to allow yourself to actually go through the fear and into the underlying grieving that actually your fear is generally covering, right? Now, with regard to the spirit uh, attachments, those attachments are going to occur every single time you deny an emotion. So many of you today have brought along spirits who are with you because you're denying your own emotion. Does that make sense? And then some of the emotions that you have are like anger. That's a, you know, that's a capping emotion and then some of those spirits connect to that emotion. And some of the emotions are like an angry grief, if you like, which is still not the underlying childhood experience. And so some of the spirits with you are in angry grief as well and they connect with that emotion inside of you. The key for you to remember all the time is stay connected with your body and yourself. And if that means you have to stop emotionally processing and go for a jog or go for a walk or do some exercise or do something else that reconnects you with your body so you stay in your body when you're processing your emotion. It's pointless you getting out of your body to process an emotion because firstly you don't process the emotion and then secondly a spirit can use your body for whatever they want to use to process, your emotion, to process their emotion. And they don't finish up processing theirs either, to be frank, because it's driven by an emotion within the both of you to avoid your own emotions. And so this is why it's so important to own your own stuff all the time, own your own stuff. Nothing that's happening around you in your life, all the events, everything, is all happening because of our emotion. We need to own that and stay in that. Now, if you're worried about being able to tell the difference, um, the key is to deal with that fear firstly. So allow yourself to feel that maybe, you know, you are being overcloaked or whatever it is that that's the feeling that you have. Talk to God about it. Remember yesterday I said one of the major ways in which you can deal with all of these fears is to talk to God about the truth of them what you really feel all the time. Stay connected with God through these processes. If you stay connected with God, you will never get into a state where you're out of what people would call out of control, where you have to be committed or something like that. Does that make sense? It's only when you get away from that connection and away from the connection with yourself, that's when you're inviting these spirits to come in and other, other people around you even to come in. Now, you can feel those needy emotions in you. Many of you can feel them. Sometimes I get people coming up to me who don't want to give me a hug, they want to get a hug. Right? <laughs> you need to look at your emotions about that. Do, do, can you see? There's something in there for you. Why do you want to get a hug from somebody? It's because of something going on within you. Of course I'm happy to give you a hug. I don't need a hug from you though. Does that make sense? So allow yourself to feel why you're needy like that because it's those needy based emotions that finish up connecting you, disconnecting you from your own self and connecting you energetically and emotionally with everyone around you. And that's when you become heavily invested in their opinions, heavily invested in a spirit's emotion. And when that happens, that's the beginning of what you would call spirit obsession. Right? So many of you who are mediumistic, if you want to follow the divine love path, own your own emotions. Most of all, that's the most important thing for you to do. And stay connected with God before you begin anything. And as you're going through everything, stay connected with yourself and with God through the process. Then you'll find it a lot easier. Mary. We might just turn down those mics just for a sec. Uh, Mary does. No, don't do that. Oh, it's not those. I just want to turn down these ones here because they're ringing a bit. That's the one there. Radio, Mary, fire away. Um, what's really confused me is that um, I was sexually abused by my neighbour when I was six. Yep. I have no memory of it, but my sister remembered it. But yep. I had dreams, had nightmares of being of vampires coming and sexually molesting me. Yep. What really confuses me is that I really believed in Jesus and God then, and I used to go to bed and cry and talk to God and so. And I was really emotional as a child, so mm -hmm. why, why didn't that help me? Um, you had some opposing emotions already in you from your parents' condition. And that's what uh, caused you the damage, in fact. So 
So what happened with all of, with all of childhood abuse, it's the parent's condition that attracts the abuse, not the child's condition. But I used to go to bed every night just to be with God and talk to Jesus, and I think that's why I lost my faith. Um, yes, many uh, child, people who have been abused as a ch child have lost their faith in God, certainly. Um, but also, bear in mind that false beliefs don't help you either. But I, I really did feel Jesus and God. I know. <laughs> but understand that your parents' false beliefs don't help you. You see, what's, hap what's happening is most of you are still not aware of how much, as a parent, you affect your child and how much you as children have been affected by your own parents' condition. You see, it's the parents' condition that attracts everything to the child, including any abuse that occurs to the child, is attracted by the parents' condition. Parents' fears, parents' unhealed sexual fears and sexual responses and so forth. And, and there's a lot of other things about fear of protection, fear of children, and, and, and I could list like hundreds of different emotions that finish up combining in the parent's condition. And it's the parent's condition that protects the child. So if a child is unprotected, it is, a, it is because of the parent's condition. Now in your case, Mary, you actually were protected as well. You had just not had the memories of it yet. But the times when you were unconscious of the experience were the times when you were in the state I mentioned earlier to, what was her name? Sorry? To Vedika, yeah, up the back. Remember I told her that she was actually taken out of body and kept protected so she didn't have to experience the events? That actually also occurred to you. This is why other people can tell you about the events, but you can only remember perhaps even before or after or not even remember that at this point. So the truth is you were protected, but you need to actually go work your way through the emotions that God doesn't love me, God didn't protect me and you need to allow yourself to feel those emotions. Does that make sense? So there's no chance when you're a child because we had a big property and I was able to externalise my emotion down the beach when no one could hear me. I could scream and yell and cry. But there's no chance when you're living with parents that are so damaged. It's very hard when you're living with parents that are damaged because all they're doing is reinfecting the emotion you're releasing. So every day you release something, the parents the next day reinfect you with the same thing. Do you know what I mean? Like they treat you badly, they punish you, they maybe <laughs> corporal punish you and all those kind of things. So you release something one day and express the emotion and the very next day they do exactly the same thing that made you <laughs> sad the previous day. And so it's very, very difficult. And this is part of the multi-generational uh, problems that we, we face at, on the planet. And this is why one generation has to make the change. Because if this generation, our generation, does not make the change, the next generation now is faced with the same issues and the same problems because of what's going on in terms of soul damage. So the issue always gets back to the fact that if the parents are completely owning their own emotions, then the child is fully protected in that <coughs> place. But that is rarely, if ever, happening on the planet. And you, you can feel even in yourselves at times when I say that, how much resistance there is inside of you to that truth. There is so much resistance inside of us as parents about owning the damage that we have done to our own children. Right? To actually own it emotionally, own the causes of it, I mean. Not, not to take the blame in the sense of the effects, I'm saying own the cause. The cause of my, like my sons, have both had to work through huge amounts of emotions about their relationships with women. They both go down the track of choosing women who, who are princess type women and then pleasing them as much as they possibly can to their own detriment. Who created that? I did. Now, I created that. I need to own that and the way I own that is not just by only saying the words. The way I own that is I go back and feel my causal emotion as to why I did that inside of me. Does that make sense to everyone? Feel that emotion, focus on that emotion inside of me. I, I can take responsibility for that emotion that's inside of me. Now as I'm doing that, what's happening with my boys is that they are automatically now working their way through those emotions because dad has already done that in his own life and is already working through those emotions in his own life. And every change I make in that area affects them. So 
I need to own the fact that I created this with my own children. One generation has to do that. But all of us need to understand that we are not to blame for most of the emotional injuries inside of us. We are only responsible for the releasing of them. Mm -hmm. Good. So I am not to blame for the emotional injuries inside of myself. I am only responsible for releasing them. Only I have control over who releases my own emotions. I am the only person who can release the emotions now that they've entered me. And this is one of the sad, sad results of mankind walking away from God. Because if we never walked away from God, we wouldn't even have these emotions in us to deal with. Right? And you will see in a few generations' time, even in maybe one or two generations' time, the effects of people living in divine truth and what it has on their children. And you'll just, you'll look back at this generation that we're living in now and say, wow, wasn't that a bad dream? Mm. Right? Look at this terrible place where we've been in and look at what was possible all that time. And yet we just didn't know because we just carried this multi-generational, multi-generational abuse, multi-generational abuse and away we went and carried it down generation, generation and generation. But what you state, Mary, is very true. As a child, it is very difficult to protect yourself against anything unless you're really connected with God. And even then, you're going to get generational abuse from your parents because they're going to keep doing the same thing until they change. And many of you feel that that is very unfair. And that's the emotion you need to release. Does that make sense? Let go of the fact that it's so unfair. Allow yourself to feel that. Yell at God, firstly, you might need to about how unfair this system is and then go into that emotion and release the emotion. You'll come out of it understanding the benefits of it and the truth of it and also in fact the love in it because there is actually love in the what, everything that God has created but only when you've dealt with that emotion. Yeah. If that makes sense to everyone. And microphone down there, thanks. AJ, with the breathing Mm -hmm. with your fear diaphragmatically what you were talking about before mm -hmm. do you just need to do that and then you'll drop into something else is that all you need to do just breathe a lot of the times that's all i've ever needed to do to get into my emotion just to breathe but you have to breathe fully into your diaphragm to make that happen and that's why you're doing that really gets things going and open up inside of you now after a while you don't need to do that so much because you're so connected emotionally you're like a child so you imagine a child running around trips over starts crying straight away doesn't it? it's not like uh, looking around firstly to see whether anybody's there and then cries <laughs> or <laughs> do you know what I mean like because that that would be a needy projection you know and then or or it's not like it falls over and cries and then looks around and somebody somebody isn't there and then they cry because they, you know, they're scared of being seen to cry. That's another projection. Normally the child will just go and fall over and cry. That's what you'll be like in the end. You won't need to breathe to get in contact with it. You won't need to do all these other things to get in contact with it. But what we're doing, and this is something to, that is very important to understand, what you're doing is you're breaking through all of these walls and barriers that have been piled on you for years and years and years. This is multi-generational walls and barriers that have come down through the generations. If you look at it in the Paget messages, we, we called it in the Paget messages multi-generational sin or multi-generational missing the mark. The, the, the sins of the parents being visited upon the son, this is what that means. It doesn't mean that you have to pay for their, their faults in the sense of a physical effect way. What it means is their emotions inside of them unhealed got transmitted into you and now you're paying for their decision to not heal their own emotion right so let's make the decision to heal our own but to do that we're going to have to work through some of this injustice feeling that we have why do we have to do it why couldn't have they done it you know all those kind of emotions why did God make it this way and all of those kind of things now when you come through those emotions and out of them you'll realize why God made it this way and, and in fact rather than me telling you, I'd love you to go through some of those realisations because when you do that, so powerful realisations that you start understanding God so much in the process of realising why God made it the way she made it. Better let yourself just feel and experience the emotion. 
I just wanted to add that I, I don't actually think breathing is the only thing you have to do. No. You have to be in a state of willingness to experience your emotion, then you can breathe into the emotion. But yeah. f personally, for myself, getting to the point of willingness to experience all of my emotion... It is the hardest thing. It's the hardest thing, and I need to do a lot more than breathe. Yeah. Yeah. You're looking so beautiful today, Tom. <laughs> 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 Sorry about that, but... Uh, <laughs> Just had to say that, I just felt that. Um, the, uh, the thing that Mary brings up is a very important point because remember yesterday I said that one of the biggest blockages is this feeling that we have that we're not going to be able to cope, right? That we won't be able to deal with these emotions. You see, that creates an unwillingness within us to deal with them. So I start talking about anger. I get a lot of the audience feeling, no, I don't want to deal with that emotion. That emotion is yucky, it's bad, it's... You know, how many times have we been drummed into us with the new age beliefs? You're in an angry state, you're not very developed, you know, and, and, and so it goes on. There's so much judgment. What about from the Bible? If you get angry, you sin. Right? There's actually a passage in the Bible that says you can be angry and not sin, believe it or not, but nobody quotes that one. It's always the, it's always the other ones, you know. And so, so what we finish up doing is, is we read all this holy literature, if we could call it that, and then... In the process, we come up with all of these ideas of what it means to be a spiritual person and then we realise, wow, I'm not really like that, so what I'll try to do is be like that in here. And that's not the divine path. The divine path is to be like that in here. And to be like that in here is going to mean and require of us a willingness to release emotion. It's going to require us not just a willingness, but remember what I've said humility is? A passionate desire to fully experience all of your own emotion. That's what you're going to need in the end on this path. And if you don't have a passionate desire to experience just one emotion, then that emotion will prevent you from progressing. Right? And when you think about it, that makes sense, doesn't it? That's our free will in action, isn't it? We have the free will to passionately avoid our emotion or passionately desire the emotion, don't we? We can choose either. Right, what I'd like to do is trigger a little bit more fear, though, if we can. Is that all right? <laughs> What's the subject? Oh, it's still fear. Still fear? Yeah. Oh, hello. Go. Um, it's still fear, but it's a, a comment that you made towards the end of the movies. Yep. Um, with the expulsion of, you know, the demonic of spirits? entities with spirits. Yep, yeah, yep. But a, a loving way, <laughs> I guess. Um, like I see them quite regularly, mm -hmm. you know. How do you do it? How do you sort of help somebody that is that has got someone with them, and it's not very nice? The reason why someone, uh, why a spirit is with a person, and if the spirit isn't in a very nice condition, is because of the person's emotions. Mm -hmm. All right. Now just earlier, do you mind me relating something, Liz? For you, just earlier, Liz had an emotion in the break. You may have heard her screaming in the break. Liz had an emotion where she wanted to get away from her terror. As soon as she had that emotion, there was another spirit around her who also wants to get away from her terror and she wants somebody else to share in her terror with her. And so what she did was she just overcloaked Liz. Right? And so Liz is there screaming and I can feel she, it's not Liz screaming anymore. It's this spirit screaming. Right? So what attracted that was... Liz's desire to get away from the full experience of her own emotion. Because she started getting terrified, she went out of body. Right? She didn't want to feel the terror herself. And as soon as you do that, you're inviting someone else to come in with you right, in the process. You want it to actually happen, you see. Spirit attachment cannot occur without the person's emotional involvement. Now, I'm not saying their intellectual involvement, notice. I'm saying their emotional involvement. There's an emotional reason why that person is attached to you. Right? The key is to help the person identify what the emotional reason is inside of themselves. Right? So all I, did was there, all I did there was just held Liz on the ground for a little bit, if anybody saw that, and I just talked in her ear saying, Liz, come back here. Liz, come back here. Liz, come back here. Until after a few times I said that, Liz came back. Right? She stopped screaming and then I said, Liz, you need to stay with me now. Stay here now. Stay in your body. Stay in your body. Right? She stayed in her body. 
And then when she got out of that process, I sat her up, we sat up and we talked about why the Spirit did that with her. And that's what we need to do with the, all of these people who are having trouble with spirit connections. So if you're having trouble with a spirit connection, it's because of something going on inside of yourself that's attracting this connection. Does that, that make sense? Yeah. And the way you can help the person is focus on the emotion that caused that attraction. And that, that emotion will be very, very different for every person. Mm -hmm. But focus on the emotion that causes the attraction. Yeah? Thank you. Should we come down the front again? Um, I don't really understand what happens uh, when you go out of body though. Like do you have control over, you, over your body or? Well the thing is, um, the truth is you always have control over your body. When you go out of body or away from your body, what you're trying to do is relinquish control. You want to get away from how you feel, you see. And when you try to distance yourself from how you're really feeling, that is when you're opening yourself up to someone else coming in and and influencing you. And by the way, that someone else might be a person on earth as well as a person in the spirit world and any one of them can influence you. It's while you're not connected with yourself that other people can in influence you. The truth is not a single person on this planet can, can manipulate you or control you unless you have an emotion that allows it. So you need to look at the emotion that allows it. Um, cause uh, when you were just talking before, that made me think of times when I have been processing and just like before when I left, um, you know, I was lying on the ground and then sometimes I, f I feel like I'm so in the emotion that it's sort of like I, I'm not aware of what's happening with my body. Is that sort of what it's like or? When you're fully in the emotion itself, you, you will often, like you will feel the emotion completely and that's what I mean by staying inside of yourself. It's when you feel a distance between what's going on outside of yourself and so, so Liz was feeling a bit of distance between this physical expression what was going on and actually her own feelings, right? There was a bit of distance happening between there which is a good indication as well. But if you're sensitive emotionally to other people's emotion, you will feel when a person is separating from themselves and not staying in the emotion itself. You will also feel when the person is going into anger but using tears as a method to do that. Because there's plenty of times when we do what I would classify as angry crying, which is actually not getting at a causal emotion at all. And so what we need to do is a look at the issues of why. Remember it's our blockages to emotion that cause us to step away. In your case, because you're doing pretty good with your emotions, what's happening is you're staying in your emotional experience. You're fully experiencing your emotional experience. In that place, you're not necessarily conscious of your body or not conscious of your body because you're fully in the emotional experience itself. And that's a different place than what I'm trying to describe with regard to a spirit. Yeah, that's good. All right, yeah? thank you. Um, if we go up the back there. Is there a mic? Oh, going? oh sorry, there's a mic here, sorry. Um, yeah, I just wanted you to clarify what you said earlier on about in the next month to six weeks doing fears if we don't um, do our fears or if we don't want to, that some unfortunate things or bad things will come into our life. I just didn't quite... Well, I hope that. I didn't say it like that. No, that's, no, uh, that's not what no, I meant. Well, it's not yours. <laughs> uh, what I meant was that if you lived in your fears, like I'm not suggesting for the next six weeks you live in your fears. Because if you live in your fears, you will certainly attract negative events into your life during the next six weeks if that's what you choose to do. What I'm suggesting is instead of living in your fears, I'm saying experience emotionally the fear and release it from you. And that doesn't need to have to be a long period of time. In fact, it, with one of these fears, you, you might work them through it in an hour or two hours if you fully commit to feeling the fear itself, right? The problem is most of the time we don't fully commit to feeling the fear and instead we live in it. And certainly the danger of living in your fears is you start attracting what those fears are quite rapidly. And this is why a lot of new age beliefs have, don't you ever think about what you're afraid of, you think about all these positive things instead, right? That's why those new age, that's how they came about. Because people often when they start connecting with their fears don't experience them and release them. What they do instead is they live in them which causes more of that attraction. And so I'm just providing you a warning. If you don't decide to fully experience your fears 
if, if you're setting your, if you want to deal with your fears and you decide to fully experience your fears, everything's going to be fine. But if you want to deal with your fears, you think, and then you live in the, the actual fear itself without releasing it, you're not going to be fine. That's what I'm saying to you. So, so just, it's just a warning to you. That's yeah. the law of attraction at work, if you like. Thank you. Does that make sense? There's no threat involved here of, oh, you don't do it, then you're going to be in trouble. None of that. It's up to you. Yeah, it's, not, it's up to you what you choose to do. Um, I, do, I just had a um, very large response to the first movie. Yep. Um, um, the, the lady in that looked very much like my sister who died of cancer. Right. And um, I've always had a, a, a feeling perhaps that there was a, what I would have called a possession in those days. Yep. Um, and I, I'm not just sure, I know the end result is I've got to clear my emotions around it anyway, but. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's, it's just a huge reaction that I've had of not um, I tried to speak to Mary and I just I couldn't speak at all I, I get very um, terrified when that sort of thing comes yeah. up that I that, that I, to speak and yeah. um, I seem to tie a lot of things together with I had polio and, and that seemed to be a I, I can't remember anything for 12 months at that point and yep. it feels like suddenly um, suddenly today that seems things seem to have sort of um, seem to be connected yeah. and I don't know whether I've got a big imagination <laughs> or whether there's actually and I just I guess I would like to make some sense of that if I can I'm very um, um, what's going on is is that yes many of the diseases that have occurred in almost every person's family not just your own are due to different spirit obsessions going on what happens is the spirit has a certain group of emotions when they pass Often the spirit might pass with the disease itself, like cancer or, or other, some other disease. And then what happens is that spirit then connects to a f familial figure, so a family figure on earth. Usually it's a, it might be a granddaughter or a grandson or you know, some kind of relation, someone who they actually like you know, in terms of their personality. And what happens in that connection is they start impressing, just like a parent would impress, their damaged emotions upon that child. And the problem is, is that creates, and often the, ch the person in the spirit world is still not very progressed, and they often feel the same disease is still within them even in the spirit world, right? And that impression gets impressed upon the child as well. And this is the cause of a lot of diseases, particularly in children. And polio is certainly a, 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 a one, of those, uh, one of those diseases that, uh, and I don't know if you'd really call it a disease, but it's one of those uh, uh, illnesses that actually are caused by spirit, uh, a lot of spirit interaction, along with many other childhood cancers, uh, child onset diabetes, and lots of other different emotions. So uh, a lot of other di different diseases, but notice I have a habit of calling them emotions, because um, they are all driven emotionally. So yes, uh, in, in uh, next month, I'm up at Mackay, and giving a talk up there, the two days I'm talking up there are about spirit attractions to people on earth and then the damage that that does to people on earth and spirits in the spirit world. And you'll find that there's huge amounts of, of damage that is done through these attractions, these attractions that are still happening between the spirit world and here on earth. And when you talk to many mediums, you find the level of those um, attractions because many of the mediums have often had to deal with those particular illnesses and they, and they get told through their spirit friends that, oh, this is actually about a, an attraction to a certain spirit. Mm. Can I just ask the difference because I saw many similar behaviours with my sister to what the, uh, the, the Amelia, yeah. Yep. And also I mean, dreams where I was made to eat spiders and all sorts of yep. things, I guess, beyond the disease as such, yes. beyond just the sickness. It felt like very much a mental... Yes, most um, of the spirits well. who are in this condition are in very poor condition. They have full of unhealed emotions. Many of them are in what you would classify on earth here as a psychotic sort of a state, even in the spirit world, in the darker areas of the spirit world. And then when they connect to a person through the emotional connection, then you see huge connections. Mary's just reading a book at the moment which I've suggested uh, quite a number of times for people to read. It's called 30 Years Among the Dead by Dr. Carl Wickland. 
If you, I want to know about spirit possession and spirit obsession and how much it actually influences almost all illnesses and diseases there are on earth, that is an excellent book to read. It's, a, it's about a doctor who was in the 20s and 30s uh, who worked with his wife who was a very good trance medium. And what he did was he documented time after time after time after time all these different illnesses that he cured by actually dealing with spirit obsession. And, uh, and it's a very, very well written book with lots of case studies of each situation in it and it's really worth the read. It's on the uh, CD uh, um, and it's also downloadable on the Divine Truth website. And if people can't find it, I could email it to them. And Peter's happy to email it to you if, if you can't find it as well. I've left a copy with him. So, Right, let's get on to the next subject, shall we? A lot of you have been asking me about this subject of earth changes and you think what, what I'm going to do is give you all of these heads up about earth changes, don't you? Yeah. I'm not going to give you any heads up about earth changes. What I'm going to do is help you address some of your fears about earth changes. And that's a different thing altogether, right? All right. Now, what we're going to do is just uh, perhaps read a few little things that we've got printed out. On this little session we'll do a little bit of channeling about earth changes if we can manage that. And um, we'll also talk to you about some of the earth changes and then we'll show you some movie about it. All right? Now to me, in my mind, the best movie about this subject is going to be 2012, which is coming out I think November the 13th. So my suggestion is go and have a see of it. I'm one of their greatest advertising fans, I think. <laughs> it's a good movie and, uh, that I, as far as I can see. And uh, many of the events portrayed in it are actually going to be quite realistic in the future. So it's a lot of uh, channeled or semi-channeled material that's been presented in book form and then, and then written for a movie. And of course there's Im some embellishments and so forth. Now this is one of Mary's uh, most... Uh, unsavoury subjects, I suppose you'd call it, so she doesn't want to <laughs> be involved in this. Um, one of the reasons why is because in the past, every time... I've got something on my teeth now. <laughs> every time um, I've spoken about um, earth changes with groups of people, it's greatly polarised people's emotions. And often afterwards, what's happened is I've had lots of people very angry with me. And of course, you know, when you get angry with me, I can feel those projections. So I've had to work my way through those kind of things. And Mary's very frightened of uh, people getting angry with me because last time that happened, uh, not very nice things happened to me and therefore not very good things happened to her life either. So, so um, that's one of the issues that Mary's having to work through about this subject. I uh, feel quite good about dealing with this subject with everyone. But I want to talk about a few emotions about this subject that you have. Uh, I'd like to firstly talk about the ostrich emotion. <laughs> Is that how do you spell that? Is that right, ostrich? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, you know the emotion that's bury your head in the sand and hope it all goes away type emotion. Now many people in the past have got quite angry and upset with me about this subject and then they've done that. Now you're, you're totally able to do anything you want, of course. Right? That's your emotions and you're, you're, you're having your free will, that's your experience. So you're allowed to choose to bury your head in the sand if that's what you want. I am not, I'm going to keep talking about it, right? Because they are, earth changes are coming. Now as to when they come, well obviously that will depend on a lot of factors. Some of it is soul condition factors and some of it is actually physical factors that are to, to do with alignment of the with the sun and, and the earth in the galaxy and quite a number of other issues. Now you can read about all of them on the internet. So I'm not really interested in talking about all of them. Um, that don't interest me very much at all. All that interests me is you helping, helping you with your soul condition about this issue. Does that make sense? Because to be frank with you, I would love for the majority of you to survive it. The reason why I'd love for that is because the earth is going to need people who are in better soul condition who are able to show others how to live in harmony with the earth in the future. And if we all finish up passing, 
we'll have to all start again. Like, so all of you people who, here who are all living on the coast and doing your thing and, and feeling like you want to bury your head in the sand about the whole issue, that's up to you. I think I would prefer that you want to live alongside of us in dealing with the future events myself. That's what I would prefer to see. What you do is totally up to you. Now, all of that sounds like a lot of people said, oh, now AJ is just being manipulative and whatever else. No, I'm not. I just don't want to have to do the same work again. <laughs> <laughs> like, honestly, like, and can you imagine the environment? Like, instead of having this beautiful, pristine hall to do it in, we'd have to do it out in the sticks somewhere where there's probably for some time not being any power generation and we'll have to get together a heap of solar panels or whatever else just to get an amplifier to speak to a group of people. And like, can you think of all the, you know, it's a lot easier, isn't it, to deal with this issue now than it is later. And to be frank with you, it's a lot easier for you now to deal with this issue right now than it is going to be later as well. Well, can you imagine? Earth change events occur. Let's just put a bit of a scenario to you. By the way, I'm not, try, I'm not going to talk about specifics so much, but I'm going to give you some details of what may occur here, for example. You imagine for a moment here that firstly there's an earthquake, around nine on the Richter scale, which is a massive, massive earthquake. Imagine that, all the way along this coast. Right. So you've got all these earthquake events happening, and then out in the sea, in the Pacific, a land mass rises very, very rapidly, right? Very rapidly. It's 5,000 feet or what, 2,000 metres or so under the sea and it comes up overnight, right? And then you've got all this water displacement, huge amounts of water. So you've just had an earthquake, there's no power, right? There's no pumped water coming to you and now you're also going to have to handle a water event hitting the coast where the water is maybe 100 to 200 metres high. All right, so it's not your average little wave, it's something pretty big. Now can you imagine the devastation of that? Just that, those two events only. And by the way, that's not the only potential of what may occur in this, in this region but just those two events only. What would happen to us as, as a group of people? This whole coast, if you think about the whole coast, you're not going to see much of it left perhaps for, except for Butterin maybe, because we're on a high hill here, right? And then of course a bit more inland. And instead of having the Sunshine Coast, we'd have to call it the Mullaney Coast or something like that, <laughs> right? These are kind of things that may happen. So when I say may happen, the, there is a high potential of likelihood of these things happening. This is getting channeled from many different sources. You're not hearing this from me. You, there's all sorts of spirits channeling through all sorts of different people that these events are going to occur. There's even some spirits channeling that Australia won't even exist anymore because there, they say that there will be a two kilometre high wave that hits Australia which of course would wipe out pretty much all of Australia. Now I don't personally believe that, but when I present this material, when you get a printout of this material downloaded from that, I'm going to put some of these quotes <laughs> in the material from other people so that you can start having some of this fear that you're, that you're, that you're trying to deny and get away from. So the ostrich emotion is a very big emotion in us, you know. What we do is we hope that something's not going to happen. Of course, it may not happen and that's what con connects with our hope that it's not going to happen and then we don't do anything about it happening or the potential <laughs> of it happening. All of you or most of you have the, have the ability to work through different emotions on this subject. All of you also have the ability to survive any coming events just by changing your soul condition. But some of you also have the emotion that I'm going to put it all off, my changes to my life, I'm going to put it all off to the last minute. You know, like, I'm sure AJ's going to let us know a week in advance type of thing, right? <laughs> and it's not going to work like that, you know. There's going to be a series of events that occur over a long period of time. When I say a long period, maybe even two or three years of time, 
a series of events. And, and you know, at the beginning of those events we might be having a chat, but do you think there's going to be Earth satellite stations for us to continue having those chats? And do you think I'm going to have the fuel to get to the coast anymore? Probably not, do you know what I mean? And unless I can teleport, there's no other way probably to get here easily. So we can't have those discussions after that point. So you, you won't know unless you keep yourself informed and you develop your own relationship with God and your own relationship with your spirit friends, <coughs> then you'll know. So can you see there's a lot of things involved in this particular subject. My feelings are, if you want to bury your head in the sand, you're, to you're totally able to. I am not, this is not a fear discussion for me. Now while I recognise that for many of you it might be a fear discussion, and um, to be frank with you, that's your problem. Right? In the sense that it's your fear. And you need to let yourself work through that fear. And I'm not trying to scare you here. What I'm trying, oh, why am I trying to scare you? No, I'm not <laughs> trying to scare you here. What I'm trying to do is ask you some questions about love of yourself. Now how is love of yourself involved in an earth change discussion? Well isn't it quite obvious really? If I loved myself and I knew from all these different sources that there's going to be some earth-based events that are going to affect my life and I have a roundabout time frame that they're going to happen any time between now and you know, maybe 2016 or something, over the next so let's say five, six, seven, eight years or whatever and I know they're going to occur then, if I loved myself wouldn't I just make preparations for that? That's not a fear-based discussion, isn't it? That is a love-based discussion. And if I loved other people, would I rely on them to make the preparations for me? Of course I wouldn't, would I? So, you know, it's lovely that ones like Peter and, and where is Graham and, and who are the others who have paid for the property out at Brad, Brad and, and some of the others who have paid for the sanctuary. It's lovely that I've done that and it's also lovely that I've said to you that you can go out there any time you want, that's lovely too. Um, and, but, but at the end of the day, if I don't provide for myself, am I being loving to Peter and to, and to Graham and Jen and Brad and these other ones who have paid for that property? Does that make sense? Am I being loving to them? If I'm expecting them to be the people that do everything and I do nothing, but then I expect at the end of the day if I want somewhere to run to, I go there. Now, that doesn't seem very fair to me, does it? Does it seem fair to you? Like, does it seem loving to you? That's the way it is at the moment, so, so we need to look at that, right? We need to look at our own emotions in that. Now, also we need to look at our law of attraction. There's been some things suggested about being able to do, like some, I've heard back from some people that some people seem to think that I know everything. What? When have I said to you I ever know everything? When have I said that? Haven't I said there's only one being in the universe that knows everything? Who's that? And if you connect with God, then you'll get to know as eventually, the more you connect with God, the more you'll get to know. Right? Isn't that right? All right, so you relying on me to know more than you know is ludicrous. Whether I do or not know more than you know, it's still ludicrous to rely on me with it. Can you see that? So stop relying on me with these things. Stop relying on other people to do things for you and start preparing for what you personally believe is going to occur. Now if you don't personally believe it's going to occur, then don't prepare. <laughs> you don't have to. I'm not going to stop you coming from group, groups anymore to learn about divine truth just because you never prepared for earth change events. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like it's not an important issue to me. I want to survive them because I want to stay here and teach some more. That's my desire. What's yours? Is yours the same desire or some of you I know don't have the desire, some of you have the desire to pass. I've heard you say it. I've heard you say, if I've got to go and change my life that much, I'd rather pass. I've heard some of you say that. Now that sounds a bit suicidal to me, but anyway, that <laughs> seems to be an unloving emotion, don't you think? And, and some of you have said, also, I don't want to do it until right near when I have to. Well, you know, why that sounds all logical, it doesn't seem like a very loving thing to other people or to yourself. Like to run around at the last minute in a panic. What if you get it wrong? You have to use a mic, Pete. Um, yeah, what if you get it wrong? What if you get the timing wrong? And then I've heard a lot of people say, oh, 
it doesn't really matter to me much, this issue. And I'm going, what? How can it not matter to you? Don't you want to teach others divine truth that you're learning? Like, we've talked about so much, all of the different opportunities we're going to have here on the earth compared to being in the spirit world of learning more divine truth. Right? And also teaching and helping others. Like, oh, what about all these spirits who are in dark places? Do you think there's going to be less of them after this event? No. You know, you know what if... Like some spirits have estimated up to 54% of the Earth's population is going to pass. Right? That's been some of the spirits' estimations. Now, by the way, there's survivalists who are receiving other spirits' information who say 95% of the Earth's population is going to pass. Now, I don't agree with that, but that's what they say. But let's say we go for conservative estimates from spirits that different spirits have given, 54%. That's one heck of a lot of people. That's three and a half billion people who are passing in their current condition without a knowledge of divine truth, without a knowledge of divine love, many of them on natural love paths, firmly ingrained in natural love paths. Like, How much help are they going to need? Lots of help. Now you imagine the spirit world has been preparing for this for years, right? And there are a lot of preparations that have gone on in the spirit world for the passing of these amounts of people. But there is so much we can do, particularly if we develop ourselves emotionally. And there's so much we can do in leading, in also becoming a person who leads other people into this new place. And that's not going to be a per position of power, by the way. That's going to be a per place of service. So if we're not learning to serve others now, then, and we want to boss others around or be powerful about others, and m manipulate others, then obviously we're not going to have the right attitude either. There's so many emotions in this that we need to work our way through. Right? So let's start working our way through them. Now, what, I, what I've been doing is just collecting little bits and pieces of different people's channelings about this issue. And James did some channeling over the last few days that I'd just like to read for a moment. I'll just read some snippets of it for you. <clears throat> the feelings of fear are the ones that demand your attention at this time. These have been dominating your functioning for some time and are arising for attention. Many things have happened which have triggered your fears. The coming earth changes are causing fear in you, although you feel that they are not bothering you as much as they are. You have felt within you an urge to move away from the city for many years and have done nothing about this and now fear that you have lost valuable time. You also now fear that you don't have the money to allow you to move in the way that you desire. Feel these fears and allow them to pass through you as while they persist they will drive your behaviour. Earth changes will occur and have the potential to be very severe indeed. Many people will pass over and the face of the earth will change considerably. Because these changes can be so massive, people are resisting acknowledging that this is a reality for them. Many feel that they don't want change of this magnitude and resist even the thought of it. If you ignore something, then it will go away. As you have said amongst yourselves, the best one person can do is deal with their own feelings and persist in the divine love pathway. You must pay heed to your own desires as there is error persisting with you in your present state of living that if that is not what you truly desire. I just want to comment about that. Many of you have had for many years a knowing within yourself that there is this earth change stuff happening, coming up, haven't you? What have you done about it personally? Now, some of you, 25 years ago, moved up to the hills and then 20 years later you thought, hasn't come yet, let's move that down to the beach. You know, like, and so some of you have even done that, right? But you're not actually listening to your own hearts right, on this subject. Now, many of you have known for many years in the sleep state, in, this, in your sleep state, obviously you leave your body and you're, and you're in the spirit world in your sleep state, and many of you have known for many years that these things are happening and even the intensity of what, what's going to occur. 
And yet, we choose often to still live our life the same way as we've always lived it. Now, does that make much sense to you? If you look, about, look on that. You have had, like I'm not talking about my desires here. I'm saying I can feel in you your desire to listen to these things, right? You have had a desire. Before you met me, many of you knew about this earth change stuff, right? I had nothing to do with that. You knew this before you even met me. Some of you muscle tested it. Some of you had mediumship with it. Some of you did all sorts of things, but you found out and even through your own feelings found out things. Is that not correct? Right. So why are you doing something about it? There's got to be an emotion. Can you see that? What's the emotion? We've got to face those emotions. What is the emotion stopping me from acting upon my own desire? Right? So what's the emotion? What kind of emotion? One emotion might be this one. The changes are going to be so big that I don't know if I want to live after them. That could be one of the emotions, couldn't it? That we need to face. Another emotion could be the changes are going to be so big that I'm going to be uncomfortable. <laughs> well, yes, of course you're going to be uncomfortable if you don't make any preparations. Like, do you think you're going to have a dunny to sit on if you don't make a dunny to sit on for the Earth Change events, right? Of course not. So you're going to be uncomfortable and you're going to have to squat if that's what happens <laughs> when you survive, right? And don't you come going to my house hoping to use my toilet. I'll say, I'll say I told you, you remember back, what's the date today? 25th of October 2009, remember I told you to make a dunny for yourself. <laughs> right? Use your own dunny. Right? Now, that's the thing we need to bear in mind is that all of us have this self-responsibility. Now, many of you don't believe that earth changes are occurring. Fine. You don't have to believe them. You don't even have to believe them to continue coming. That's fine too. Like, I don't expect you to believe them or not believe them. That's up to you. But many of you do believe them and yet you're not doing anything about them. Now then, but there's got to be an emotion in that for you. What's the emotions in that for you? Jen, could you just pass the mic to Jen? Thank you. You've only got to watch the general news or right in our backyard, there was recently a dust storm that came from south, down South Australia in up into Brisbane. Now on that day I drove to Brisbane thinking that I would be fine and I'm convinced about earth changes but I thought I would be fine getting to my son's house um, at Stafford. The amount of chaos that was on the road on that particular day Just from was, the dust storm. was astronomical yeah. and I thought I had time, yeah. I thought I had enough petrol. Yeah. I thought I was going to be okay until yeah. I got into the middle of the chaos. Yeah. That, um, and you've only got to look at the news um, in the last little while, the amount of tsunamis in our general region that have um, been listed. Um, what's that website, Graham? Um, the, mm, doesn't yeah. matter, Jen. Yeah. Um, that shows that um, the earth changes are actually upon us. And they're already happening, yes. Yes, that it's... Um, so even if you don't do things emotionally, and I'm not suggesting you don't, you just have to look at what's happening in the news to know. Yeah. Can I just uh, uh, talk about this, though? If you choose to do physical things to address this issue and not to deal with your emotions, do you know it's not going to hardly make any difference to your law of attraction? So you could choose to actually not deal with any emotions about this, but then go and get a whole supply of food. Like I read on the website recently, I was watching these websites and some of them interest me a lot and some amuse me quite a lot, but there's this one survivalist, Australian survivalist website where you can't mention who you are and you can't say your own name and they have all these silence rules. But they were talking on this website about the guns that they're storing and the, all these different things that they're doing, building bunkers and all These are serious people. Like, aren't they serious? They're building bunkers and they're doing all sorts of things. Many of the Ramtha followers, the people who think they're following Ramtha, which is probably the better way to say it, um, that many of them have been doing this for many years 
building these places, right? And quite often I look at all of that and I go, well, if you can't change your soul condition, the law of attraction isn't going to work very well for you in those situations even then. So my suggestion instead is to do a combination of things. Deal with the soul condition reasons, firstly, why you haven't acted up till now. So what's going on inside of you? If you haven't acted up to now, why haven't you? What's going on inside of you emotionally? If you have believed that earth changes are going to occur, why are you still putting off doing something about it? And sometimes I hear people say, oh, but it's nice and comfy down the coast here. We're right by the beach. It's lovely to walk along the beach. Yeah, I know. Myself and Mary enjoy that every time we come here. <laughs> um, that's very true. But why haven't you prepared something else? You know? And also you've got to start thinking and feeling about what's going on for you emotionally in this interaction with these events. Because emotionally there's a lot going on here. A lot of you are so afraid of what's coming that you don't want to act about and do something about it. And some of you are so afraid that you're even considering at the soul level, you're considering that it's better to pass than stick around. Right? Right? And I can assure you it's not going to be better to pass than stick around. It also is going to be more fun if you stick around. <laughs> right? Because there's a lot to do here on earth and it'll be great to be a part of that process, right? It's just going to be so much fun. So we can enjoy... <laughs> I'm serious, right? And it's just going to be so much fun to stick around and see what's going on and see the world change in one generation, right? Isn't that going to be so awesome? It's just like, do you think we're going to be worried about, you know, the law that we broke yesterday? You know, I'm not talking about God's laws. I'm talking about, you know, well, well, no, I was thinking more about you're not allowed to build that little teepee on that block of land because of all of these, in, of the, all of these rules, right? Do you think they're going to worry about that after the... Of course not, right? They're going to be wanting to build houses galore because a lot of people are not going to have any place to live, right? And then we're going to have to live more in harmony with the environment because a lot of the environment's been destroyed, right? So that's going to be a great impetus to actually learn about, you know, proper culture, you know, in terms of growing food and veg vegetables and living more in harmony with the environment. So when you have an opportunity to go to a course about living in harmony with the environment, what do you stay home for? Oh, you know, H.A. said I shouldn't go to that course, so I never said that, you know. Why would I suggest that? There's been people offering their services to you to show you how to do things like permaculture and other things like that, right? Take them up. It doesn't matter where they're from. You might be able to talk to them about the divine love path. They talk to you about what they feel. It doesn't really matter what the outcome is, but you'll learn something in the process of how to look after yourself. Why would, you not, why would you put that off? Do you see what I'm saying? Often we're putting all of these things off because we're just quite afraid. And that's the issue we face. Um, how do you know if you are driven by fear or not in um, wanting to shift? In wanting to shift? Move. Move to another location, you mean? Well, what... You know, one of the main things you realise after you start progressing a lot is that you start realising that when you have a desire, things happen really smoothly, right? When you have a fear, things happen in a very haphazard and un unfulfilling way. So notice what your law of attraction is. So if you, if you have a pure desire, you'll find, you'll find the right property you want, you'll find all the different things, everything starts fitting in together, things work together really easily for you. It all fits together. But if you're finding that actually your law of attraction is you're getting a block here and you're not allowed to do move there and something happens there and you can't do this here, then probably you're acting out of fear and you need to just let those fears trigger you. Let those events trigger you. So let the law of attraction show you which mode you're in. When you're in desire, things will definitely usually occur. Now, when I'm in desire, I focus firstly on my emotion. Right? I don't focus firstly on selling the house. I don't focus firstly on going and getting a, you know, a larder full of rice or something like that, right? I focus firstly on dealing with the emotion. And when I work through the emotion, then I'll feel what's the best thing to do. 
and I won't run around in a panic doing it. I say, oh, we're going to get in the earth changes. You know, AJ talked about earth changes, it's terrible, terrible, you know, no way I go. You know, it's not like that, right? And, and you need to start trusting yourself and your law of attraction with this. Not me, trust you. Trust how you're feeling on this subject. What do you feel? Now, I am suggesting to you, if you feel you'd rather pass than stick around, then that is a suicidal emotion. And that's not loving to yourself. And do you think when you pass, how good your condition is going to be when you pass, do you think, with that emotion? It's not going to be as good as if you dealt with that emotion, is it? If you deal with that emotion, then you love yourself more. Many of you have an emotion too that, oh, you know, when it, when it happens, I'm sure I'm going to be in the right place at the right time. <laughs> well, that might be totally true. But nothing else is going to be in the place with you. Uh, is it like? Do you think that you're going to have a house in the place with you, and a and a and a you know a place a place to to, to grow some plants and food for you, for you? Do you think that's going to happen, unless you exercise a desire? Can you see? We've got plenty of warning about all these things. We've got plenty of heads up about it. Oftentimes, all many of you have the emotion in you that you want to do something, and yet you haven't done it. So look at why. Look at why. I want to read a bit more of this one because this was quite good. Uh, where was it? Ah. As you are well aware, the changes will be followed by massive upheavals of humanity, with many people displaced and many more feeling despair, with even greater displacement from God, with grave doubts that God could ever have done such a thing. Many will perceive it as great punishment. You, how, how many Christians are going to view it as that, you think? Great punishment. And they'll seek to take revenge on the ones they think that God is punishing. This will usually be anyone but themselves, of course. <laughs> Don't ignore these thoughts and pay heed to the feelings that they engender. These possibilities are leading many people to want to hide away as far as they can from large population areas. The law of attraction will operate as before, during and after the earth changes as it always has and always will. Therefore, the focus is now and forevermore on what you do within yourselves. You will always draw events to yourself by your soul condition. So this is what you must deal with first. The vital first step is to acknowledge that you do have a soul and then that this soul is limited by many factors. Those steps you have taken and the consequent steps are those of prayer and dealing with the feelings. Now, uh, James also asked what extent would be Australia be affected by the changes. The answer he gave, this spirit gave, which by the way was Stephen from the Bible. You remember Stephen who called the first martyr for those of you who have uh, background. Every continent will be affected and Australia will be less so than that of any other. Even though you hear and read of the possible changes, you really have no concept of the magnitude of the changes or of their impact on humanity. Changes like this have occurred before, but there has never been the numbers of people living in vulnerable locations. The sinking of Atlantis is possibly the largest event of this type <laughs> that is acknowledged in your histories. <laughs> There's a lot of fear in you guys at the moment. From what you know of the law of attraction now, it is not hard to see that such changes are inevitable. Humanity as a whole has created an environment which cannot be sustained. The changes will simply be the working out of God's laws and have no element of punishment in them. Passing over or losing accumulated possessions are not punishments. God's truth goes much deeper than any of those things. As long as you live, God provides all that you need for peace and happiness, both on earth and in the spirit world. On earth, it's harder to see this, as you've all been led astray by those who would have power, and this has been going on for a very long time. Humanity has become addicted to having everything happen as it desires, rather than recognising that everything happens as God desires, and God's desires incorporate the best interests of everyone and everything. The most essential aspect of earth changes is the return of humanity to a normal, healthy relationship with God. 
this relationship will be different from what most now consider to be such a relationship to be. The divine truth will become the norm and the false will be set aside. And this will happen faster than you consider possible. There is so much change going on in humanity and most of this is invisible other than to those with eyes who can see it and the awareness to feel it. Accept this without understanding it is beyond your present capacity to understand. The concept that the changes will happen dramatically beginning on a certain day is incorrect. The day spoken of is somewhat an arbitrary date marking a cyclical turning point. That's 2012, right? Changes are happening all the time and towards and beyond the date considered there will be an increase of changes of many sorts which will be largely considered undesirable. They will not necessarily build to a crescendo but will increase and then taper off as the precipitating causes which by the way are both soul condition and event, environmental event related. This is not unlike the working with and releasing of your own emotions. You will all require an openness to change as change will occur and you'll need to adapt to those changes. All right. There's some more that there and James and James might like to post that if he wishes to. Sorry? Yeah, it's up to James, it's James's free will. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, so that was from James. And it actually wasn't from James, was it James? It actually wasn't from you, was it? It was from Stephen, <laughs> through James. And so James provided the, the mechanism by which that could occur. One thing that you need as a medium to understand is that all you're doing is providing the mechanism through which this can occur. Our spirit friends are the ones with the knowledge. They want to give you lots of knowledge, right? But at the moment, so many of us are in terrible fear states that if they gave you a little bit of the knowledge, you'd just go into a panic and, and uh, that's not what they want to do either. They don't want to trigger more panic in you. They want, don't want you to live in your fear or bury your head like an ostrich. What they want you to do is more than that. So that was the ostrich emotion we covered. There's uh, this other emotion that I'll die anyway, right? And, and sometimes in there is the word, I want to <laughs> die anyway. Now, honestly, many of us have these emotions of wanting to die at different times in our life. The key is to acknowledge them and to work our way through them. You don't need to pass. Passing is not going to necessarily be the benefit that you think it's going to be even when you pass. The key is to work, if you learn to work through your emotions, then everything will work out fine whether you pass or not. But why wouldn't you want to stick around if it's going to be so much fun? Why wouldn't you want to? You see, it's only because we're so afraid of the change that, and afraid of how much discomfort we may experience or afraid of what might happen that we start getting upset and we start feeling like, oh, what's the point then? We might as well change. Dennis? Yeah. Just up the back there. Hey Joe, I'm pretty sure you once said that um, the collective fear will actually make the changes worse? Yes, yeah. The more fear we are in, rather than experiencing and releasing, then the worse things get. Will you think about it? Have you ever been to a, uh, in an auditorium like this where there's three or four hundred people and there's a fire alarm? Like, have you ever seen, been in a situation like that where, or where there's an actual fire now, I know some may have experienced that, but it's so different. All of a sudden, what happens is nobody thinks logically. Not a single person thinks logically at all. Everyone goes into their fear trigger. Everyone. And there's mayhem. Mayhem. This is what it's going to be like to a degree afterwards because most people haven't dealt with their fears. But you'll be walking calmly through it because you've dealt with all of your fears. <laughs> and for you, there's no mayhem. Is there, if you've dealt with the fears of it all? <coughs> but if you haven't dealt with the fears, <coughs> for you there's just going to be as much mayhem as everyone else. Yeah, uh, uh, and also um, in um, 
um, R.J. Lees's Ulysses. It actually, it, there was a, a statement in there that said that there was going to be an invasion of the Earth. Is that referring to you and the 14? <laughs> <laughs> and there has been many spirit predictions of, of large amounts of uh, what they would call, and you even see it called it like aliens invading the Earth. Remember that every time you see these channelings are all relating to spirits. And yes, there are going to be spirits in the future who will be able to connect directly with us here on Earth. And they'll materialise and you'll know them to be a spirit. Up till now what's been happening a lot is that a spirit might materialise as a person but you just think they're a normal person, right? And so you don't notice it. But in the future we'll be able to have face-to-face -face conversations with many of our spirit friends that you're already having face-to-face -face conversations with, by the way, when you're in your sleep state, right? So, so you have face-to-face -face conversations with them now in your awake state. That will all be able to happen after these events occur. Beforehand, can you imagine what it would do if that all started happening? Like most people wouldn't be dealing with their lack of faith and other issues. They wouldn't be connecting with God. They'd be connecting with spirits. They'd think these people are, are a super race or something like that. And some of them would try to experiment on them and all sorts of things would be happening, right? And obviously the earth has to change in its condition before a, a better way of communicating with our spirit friends can occur. And yes, there are a lot of predictions that have come based around the fact that there will be 14 returning to earth. But to be frank with you, like we're, on, we're only here for the same reason you're here. What's that? Because we love you, right? And you're here because you love somebody too, don't, isn't that right? And, uh, and if you develop your love, what will happen is all of us will be able to teach what we want to teach to have the changes occur. And, and all we're hoping to be able to achieve ourselves, and particularly myself at the moment, is to be able to help you on that process, that's all. So there's nothing special in that. Right? But I want to work, move a bit forward through this, uh, because what I, uh, you're okay with doing a bit of channeling on the subject, Monica? We'll see how we go. Okay. So Monica is going to risk doing some channeling again in front of you. On this subject of earth changes, I'll just grab a mic for you. Oh, it's going to be terrible. <laughs> you know it's going to be terrible. Is this one working? That's working? Yeah. yeah it's going to be terrible. Well, no, it's because it's so <laughs> fearful. But again, I think it's a good example to show people. Yeah, now, one thing I need to say is Monica is fearful about this subject, okay? So that's something to bear in mind. Every time she gets afraid from it, she doesn't want to speak about the subject. And the last time she did a bit of channeling with, with us privately about the subject, Ramtha was doing some chatting through her about the subject. And it's probably Ramtha, I feel, who wants to chat again. Um, and uh, um, Monica wouldn't say some of the things he wanted to say, right? because she felt scared of say even saying them. So you've got to bear that in mind in this channeling. So this is a live channeling and Monica's again doing it just like she was yesterday to help her through some of her own fears. So that's awesome, my sister. Okay, thank you. I think it's worth knowing as well. I, I'll be really honest. If I feel I'm slipping out of it, I'll always... Well, I mean, AJ knows, but I think it's a really beneficial um, exercise for you all to see that when your own emotions kind of intervene, you just lose that link I instantly. And you might even be able to feel when I kind of yeah. dip in and out. And what we'll try to do too is ask Ramp that every time that, every time that you do get out of what he's saying, if he just stops and tells you you're out of it. Yeah. And that way, and you can just relay that to the audience. So, okay. And then maybe we can actually talk about the emotion that got you out of it, and then okay. we'll go back in again. How's that sound? Yeah. Might as well do this live, it's okay. 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 This it has to be said, I find this so much harder because Ramp is really, <laughs> it's just a lot harder because he, he wants me to express exactly, like absolutely. Exactly the say, words. Exactly. And if I don't get it right, he'll say, go back or chat. That's not what I said. And then I start getting intellectual. So let's just see how it goes. Right. Do you want to hold that mic? Um, um, or you want I should to mine because I, I need yep, to no, really I'm totally happy. I might even just block my ears. You can block this ears. one, it's quite... It, I really need to focus Hear on no it. evil, see no evil. <laughs> <laughs> There'll come a day I'll be able to do it. But at the moment, yeah. uh, the, the channeling so. I'm 
I'm feeling really blocked. Okay. What's it about? Um, what does Rampa say it's about? <laughs> I am he started announcing himself now as Rampa Aryan. Yeah. And I'm I as soon as he says that I almost go into doubt as to whether or not So why was that? Why am I doubting it? Yeah, yeah. Because all he's doing is presenting himself as himself and his soulmate. Yeah. Yeah. So Ranza is now uh, in the celestial spheres and he now presents himself as himself and his soulmate. Does that make sense? Because they're both together. Whereas before it, it was more sort of one side of that. But, but that's triggered Monica <laughs> already. Great start, hey? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's good, that's good. So what's that about? Is that um, about the female? You're not recognising um, the female side there? or? No, because I've actually started connecting with her. It's that whole detail thing. It's the whole... You're um, afraid of getting afraid the detail wrong. Afraid of getting wrong. the details wrong and being humiliated because someone you know, right. can then verify and go, that's not what we read no, somewhere. No right. worries. Well, so I'm going to try to humiliate you as much <laughs> as possible then. <laughs> uh, it's a fear, so allow yourself to feel the fear. And he's just saying, look how far we've come together in the last week, building the bridges of trust with each other. Mm. So I need to Lovely, just focus, and I think I'll just focus on who's actually with me as well, just to... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And let's talk about a few personal things first, perhaps, and then we'll warm into the subject. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh. Our sister's made a lot of progression, huh, Ramtha? <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed, brother. <laughs> it has been quite an emotional roller coaster for her this week. Yes, yes, yes. But her levels of gratitude have increased <laughs> most dramatically. Yeah. She's starting um, to trust men again, huh? Yes. I think this is <laughs> the most beautiful part so far. Yeah. And she has moments where she wants to get very angry with me, but yeah. now it doesn't take much time for her to realize that I love her very much. and that uh, it is all a good thing for her, <laughs> yeah, yeah. much to her disdain. Yeah, even when you present the pictures that you present. Sometimes. Yes, although that she's getting quite used to now, she quite enjoys that because she's finding a higher level of gratification with the releasing that she's able to achieve. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A lot of people on earth don't understand how powerful it is to release with the help of a spirit who's really helping them. No, there, there is much um, disillusionment about the way uh, the ways of the spirit world mm. and how our interactions actually are. Mm. Um, I'm just slightly slipping. Mm. Yes, there is much fear around our. Uh, no, sorry, guys, just give me a second. Mm -hmm. He's just saying, just hear my words, relax. That's all, right. all you've got to do is repeat him. Yeah. So there's nothing of you involved in this. You don't need to worry about, because in the end, it's if you repeat exactly the words you're given, then there's nothing of you in the process, really. I am here, brother. Yeah. It's just taking some time for her to adjust this to yeah. this uh, procedure. Yeah, and the, and the pressures are a bit more greater than usual. <laughs> just a little, but <laughs> she's quite excited by this process also, it has to be said. Yeah. yeah. Yes, although there are still massive fears that she needs to work through but I'm happy with her progress. We've worked really well together this week yeah, as she's beginning to fully understand at an emotional level now. Yeah, that's good, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. So what is it you'd like to talk about with the audience that's here? I would very much like to discuss how important it is a part of your process to actually embrace the fears that you hold within you. Fear is not an enemy. Fear can be such a close compatriot of your progress on this path that very much it is the fear of the fear that un you unwillingly hold on to that has such painful repercussions on your progress um, on this path. Mm. And if one could only see that this is a helpful and beneficial partner in this process, Mm. rather than something to be separated from. It would be so much easier for humanity to move through the unloving feelings that it currently has and would have exponential repercussions for the future on, on Earth 
and for humanity. It is also really important to note that whilst most of you may be living in fear, it does not take much time with a loving intent to change this position into one of experiencing the fear fully and moving through it. It does not take much to make this change. However, it takes a full and concerted effort on your part to make the decision to do so and to make this change. For to unwittingly reside in this fear and continue living in this fear, not only has a lack for self been instigated, but no progress can be made. There is a grand difference between living in fear and feeling it and fully expressing it to a point of release and peace. This can be done on a gradual basis and does not seem to, it does not need to seem so overwhelming. One can make a change in small, she's struggling to find words, increments. This can be done in small increments, but at least take action for allowing yourself to dwell in this fear simply achieves nothing. We would also very much like you to know that there are so many bright spirit friends, brothers and sisters surrounding you on this arduous journey. However, what seems arduous to you is only based on a fundamental emotional injury you have surrounding this path or this journey that you take. To God, it is not arduous. And any feelings about this journey being arduous or a difficult task, simply remember, brothers and sisters, it is only based on a fundamental emotional injury that life may be difficult or life is tough or that God is punishing us. And all of these emotions would need to be seriously addressed for anyone to make a substantial change in the area of dealing with their fears in an effective and efficient way. I also feel it is very important at this time for you all to be aware of the possibilities with earth changes. For as Brother Jesus has already spoken, there is much complacency on earth and with humanity at this time. It can be a difficult thing to differentiate between a true, loving, heartfelt desire and a fearful need. If there is doubt around this matter, simply allow yourself feel what your body reacts to when you have a certain thought or emotion about a, 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 a certain desire and allow your body respond to you in this way and it will lead you to realize what is a truthful desire which in truth is a loving expression of the soul or one that calibrates in a fearful way by causing a negative reaction on your body. These may be symptoms as discussed earlier on by Brother Jesus palpitations, sweats, heart racing, a change in breathing pattern. Allow your body to guide you, not only in this process with desire and need, but with every emotion that you may fully experience. Your body is one of the greatest gifts that God could possibly bestow upon you. And indeed, your body is very much your friend in this matter. You humans tend to distinguish or make a differentiation between the body and the soul. It is really important to remember that the body is merely an outwardly expression of your soul's contents and current condition. Again, it is important to be aware 
that if one could embrace the body as one does emotions and the soul, you might get along a little bit better and much progress could be made far more than you can possibly imagine in this respect. What is important for you all to do as a race is to begin to return to God's natural rhythms and flows that she originally created for you. A close, a close connection between the body and soul is one of these. The earth changes will be a trigger for many of you and what might be recommended by myself, by all my brothers and sisters who know in greater detail, which at some point in the future we will instigate with Brother Jesus a, a talk specifically on, Monica has fears now. <laughs> she doesn't like you calling me Brother Jesus. Possibly. She still has many doubts. <laughs> Although that has changed quite dramatically since her time spent with you and Sister Mary. Mm. But she still struggles somewhat, as you know. Mm. Let us return. Mm -hmm. We're talking about bodies, and she has issues in this department also. Oh, of course. <laughs> As you mentioned to her before. When we were alive, yeah. Yes. She is sticking <laughs> quite profusely. She needs to have a cry about her own body. She does. She's not willing to accept that whilst it is a separate thing, it was created as a gift for her. Mm. It is not something to feel hatred or disgust towards. Mm -hmm. She has much to release around this and there will come a time where feelings that she has specifically surrounding sexual abuse as a child One of our batteries is not Maybe if we perhaps change the subject we may be able to flow, for there is much to discuss. Get away from her body. <laughs> <laughs> she would like that. <laughs> there is much for her to, to feel around this in truth. She will gradually begin to understand that this is a gift that was created specifically for her. Yeah. There is not another one of these in existence that is exactly the same as the one that was created for God, mm. for Monica. Yeah, it's lovely, Monica. She's finding this quite difficult. <laughs> yeah. You see, my friends, everything is a gift. Even the things you feel you have been lumbered with or punished, always a gift. Mm. And that includes fear. <laughs> fear is your friend. Fear is a good friend. <laughs> Where were we? We were talking about bodies, I think. Yes, I think that subject was the trigger. That was. <laughs> you were mentioning about the earth changes um, and how they 
affect us? Yes, I recall. If one can start beginning to respond to the feelings that you can feel in this gift of a body and begin to develop a trust to those feelings in which this physical body emits, it is an excellent way to support the heartfelt desires that you may have and are unsure of. So for example, if you have had a heartfelt desire to live in a certain location, but you think of many, many reasons why you should not move to that location based on fear, concern for others, lack of self-love, whatever the case may be. If you take time out and be still, simply focus on one of the thoughts or emotions about the desire and listen to what your body tells you in the same way that listening to your body and how it responds to, f to fear is essentially a way of connecting deeper to your emotions. For as I have already said, your body is simply a reflection of your soul condition, which in turn are your emotions. Do you begin to see how important the link between the two really is? It is so common on earth for those of you who are intellectual at heart, which in itself is ironic, if you can begin to realize that your heart is actually the intelligence that should be driving your day-to-day -day functioning, your life categorically would change in the most pleasurable of ways. And most of you would not be so hesitant in this respect. So one tiny, simple thing that you can take home from this time, and I have waited so long again to talk to a group, much to Monica's dismay. <laughs> if you take one simple step home with you, along with Brother Jesus' truths also, but a simple and effective way to change in a way that will feel comfortable for you possibly, is to start align, aligning your emotions and the link between your bodily responses. It can be such an incredibly powerful tool to allow you not only make decisions that are a heartfelt desire-based decision and not one based on need or fear, but also can take you to a far deeper level of emotional releasing that you can possibly imagine. Are there any questions, brother, you would like to ask? Um, I think we may deal with the subject of the, um, the details of earth changes at another time, when perhaps Monica's worked her way through some more of those fears. That would be um, beneficial, and there is much to discuss, but I feel, yeah. I feel that I might be the kind thing to do in this yeah. circumstance. And I think what we'll probably do now is just trigger them with a few movies and visuals which will help uh, our audience get in contact with some of their fears about Earth changes. I look forward to that. Yeah, should be fun, eh? <laughs> I am so appreciative of having the opportunity to speak in this way and to speak with truth. Much of what has been said by someone who refers to himself as Ramtha has been very misguided and misunderstood and misinterpreted. And to have the experience to talk alongside Brother Jesus at this time is such a great gift, not only for myself personally, my soul union mate, Orion, all my other celestial brothers and sisters who love you all so dearly. But I do not think at this time you genuinely understand or realize what a powerful path you now walk should you decide to take the first step. The service you will be able to provide not only th those who walk on this earth beside you in a physical form, 
but the amount of brothers and sisters in the spirit world who you are already directly or indirectly helping, much of which is unknown to you consciously, is greater than I can simply express at this time. I am so incredibly grateful. Brother Jesus, thank you. Thank you. It's yeah. so beautiful again. Well, it's lovely to catch up with you again. It's a great pleasure. Mm -hmm. We'll talk soon. No worries. So what we wanted to do there is just, I don't know, you can express how you feel. Yeah. So what, what we're hoping to achieve with a lot of our mediumship and healing sessions is to actually have a number of different mediums who are in the condition where they can receive accurate information without getting into fear about what they're receiving. And so part of what Monica's process is with Ramtha at the moment is Ramtha is helping her through a lot of her fears so that she can get to a point where information can be given to you of more details about her change events. But one thing that I'd just like to emphasise about what he did say, and that is, why aren't you already following what you know your desires to be? Most of the time you're doing that because you're afraid or because you're afraid of abundance issues or other types of issues. You, you actually believe that you need money to create and often you don't. All you need firstly is desire to create and a, and a willingness to deal with any emotion that inhibits that desire. So that's a really important thing myself and Ramtha wanted to talk with you about. When we uh, talked about uh, talking to groups as well with Ramtha a, a few weeks ago now, um, he actually suggested to me, the suggestion to me that we have this fear weekend, if you like. I modified it a touch and we worked together on the details basically. But, <laughs> <laughs> but basically he uh, recommended that we start really looking at the fears um, that each of us have. And then I thought if we did a presentation on the Saturday where we, we look at the fears and practical ways of doing it, dealing with it and then on the Sunday actually started triggering some of those fears that at least we would get closer to getting through this layer of fear that we have and down into the deeper emotions. So that's really good. Now, and then as uh, we deal with those fears, this information that Ramtha has, and also, by the way, many of our other celestial friends have, can be more clearly given to you and in more specific details to assist you in the path. But many of you need to firstly learn to trust your own desires. Many of you firstly need to learn if what your feelings are about these issues first than trusting a channeling, trust yourself first about, about those issues. Now I'm running out of battery too, so I might just, uh, that usually means I've talked too much, doesn't it? <laughs> no, no, my battery's doing okay. Um, so if you, can, uh, um, if you can remember that with regard to these details. Now what I'd like to do, it's getting fairly late now I think. What is it? Any who want to leave, just feel free to leave. Um, we might just have a quick showing though of some earth change type events just to leave you with something to be triggered with on your way home. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> Thank, Thank you so very much, Monica. <laughs> All right, time to fire up the system again. Uh, we'll just... Uh, Got that off, and what's this way out there for? Is it? Okay, I need to get in the drive seat. Sorry, man. We might get the. If you can turn the lights off. Well, now we're looking more like a movie theater, isn't it? Like, whoa.